Visi įvykiai išgalvoti. Visos galimybės realios. Prezidentas Andrius Tapinas. Politinis trileris. Visose knyginuose. Visai neseniai, kas domisi pasaulio pramaugų industriją, turbūt tikrai nepraleido tokio fakto apie vieną didžiausių pramaugų pasaulio, apskritai pasaulyje, fesko. Tai yra milžiniška, labai labai ambicinga muzikinį Fire festivalį, kuris turėjo tapti kiečiausių muzikos ir pramaugų festivalių pasaulyje Bahamose, o viskas baigėsi milžiniškais skandalais, bankrotais ir teismo procesais. Ir vienas iš jo organizatorių, jis buvo toks atsidavęs savo darbų, jis taip norėjo išgelbę tą festivalį, kad netgi buvo pasiryžęs tiesiai šviesiai, kai visas festivalio mineralinis vanduo buvo sulaikytas muitinėje, jis buvo pasiruošęs tiesiai šviesiai važiuoti į muitinę, pačiulpti muitininkui ir išgelbėti tą festivalio vandenį. Ir kai šita idėja ir kai šita jo frazė pateko į Netflix dokumentinį serialą apie Fire festivalį, jis iš karto tapo ne tik pasaulinę žvaigždę, bet ir pasaulio mimų karaliumi, taip galima sakyti. Ir šį vakarą šis žmogus yra pas mus. Please welcome Andy King, the one who take for the team. Hi, Andy. Thank you, thank you. Please, take Thanks. a seat. Oh. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi there. It was a long-winded introduction, but... Uh, what did you I, say? Uh, all, only the good things. I hope so. Yeah. Only the good things and nothing about the bottled water incident. Nothing. Which basically made you, uh, made you a, a, a star. What was your first reaction when you understood that Netflix isn't going to cut the scene where you offered to... Uh, how do you say it in English? Perform a fellatio? Not yeah. suck a dick, but perform a fellatio. We have very cultural show here. Oh. Uh, for a customs guy, what was your, your first reaction? When my business partner and my lawyer found out that I had told the story of Billy calling me and saying, will you take one for the team? And I didn't really know what he meant. And then I said, well, of course, I'll do anything to save this festival. And he said, okay, will you go and suck the head of customs dick? And I said, you're kidding, right? And he said, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. So I thought, well, this is how crazy it got. And I thought, you know what? I'm a gay guy. I like to suck dick. Mm. <laughs> he didn't say go find nine vaginas yeah. and sleep with them. One dick, I could nine handle. Nine vaginas, easy decision. Yeah, I could handle it. I said, you know what? It wasn't so bad. Mm. And the irony, of course, is that after the documentary was released, the LGBTQ community came after me and said, uh, uh, Netflix called and said, can you get to Universal Studios? We have a problem. And I said, well, what's the problem? They said, well, the community's unhappy. I said, what did I do wrong? And they said, well, you didn't press sexual harassment charges. And I said, well, I, I, I like to suck dick. I, I, I you know, I, I don't, I, what, what's, the, you know, so, I went into the studios and um, I had to shoot nine commercials. The first one being, hi, this is Andy King. If this happens to you in your workplace, it's not okay and don't tolerate it. <laughs> Take second commercial. <laughs> But I had to go through the whole thing to demonstrate that it's not cool to ask someone who works for you to go suck a dick. But I felt if this is what it would take to save this music festival, I'll do it. Okay, but uh, Andy, when you talk to the TV producer and you say, and I quote you, well, I know you won't use it, but here is a story. How naive you have to be to say to, to the filmmaker and expect them not to use it. Come on. I honestly didn't think. I, s I said, listen, I'm just going to tell you a little story on the side. And then when I told everybody I told the story, the lawyer said, you need to pull that quickly because it will end your career. So I called and I said, you know, and they said, Andy, this documentary is so intense that if we don't have you doing this and then going back to the intensity, there's going to be some big problems. I said, well, you know, but then I thought, you know, nobody watches documentaries and they never make any money. 
And guess what? 50, no, 22 million homes it was streamed in in the first 30 days. Now it's been in 58 million homes. Yeah. It's the most popular documentary in history. I don't think it's because of my blowjob, but um, I think you, the failed blowjob. I mean, not only there wasn't a music festival, yeah, actually, there wasn't, wasn't a blowjob. Actually, it wasn't the blowjob at all, right? No. You haven't had no. uh, uh, a privilege of sucking the customs guy dick, right? It never happened. Yep. Yeah. See how interesting it is that. Okay, and the next day, when the documentary airs, you become, uh, you wake up and you become the meme king of, of the internet world with, with all the memes coming up and, and uh, how, have you, how did you feel then? Uh, were you <laughs> devastated, uh, frightened uh, that your, your career will, will go down in flames even before it went to the fire <laughs> festival? I'm sorry to say that. Before it went into fire. I honestly was naive. I didn't think people would watch the documentary. I went to the premiere in New York City. There were a thousand guests. And everybody that was involved with the festival with me, I walked in the room like, oh my gosh, but everybody had on glasses and a hat and a hoodie, and they're all sitting in the back hiding. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, you don't, no one, you don't want anybody to know who you are, trust me. And I'm like in a pink sweater, and I'm sitting in the middle of the orchestra, and I've got 10 people with me, and um, it wasn't until my scene came up and I just shrunk down in my seat. I'm like, oh shit, it's happening. You know, I had my sister and my cousin, my aunt. I'm like, oh God, you know. And as the scene came up and everybody stood to their feet and gave me a standing ovation, it wasn't until that point that I, I thought I am done. And then I thought, wow, wait, like there's power here with a blowjob. Or yeah. there's just F failed, power. Failed blowjob. The failed blowjob. Blow and then to quickly become one of the biggest failures in pop culture today um, is an amazing thing. That how do you drive positive change? How do I tell people today, guess what? You fucking fail every once in a while. Hmm. I had 25 years of successes and nobody knows about them. Yeah. They know about my one fucking failure. And now, I'm using it to drive positive change and hopefully, hopefully try to change the trajectory of social media today. As you know, I mean, fire uh, was a social media phenomena. Another wave of stories that, uh, that was being put in, in the media that, oh, look, Andy King is embracing all the, uh, the ridicule, all the memes, and, and he, is, uh, he is happy to talk about it, you know, and so uh, did you uh, made a conscious decision on that? It's, you, did you understand that, okay, this is my chance, right? I'm in the spotlight of the whole, uh, whole world, let's do, let's do things. Or did it came just naturally? I can't say naturally, but mm. um, it was a little freaky to have in the first week or two when fire came out, um, I'd say to friends of mine, I think someone's taking my picture from behind me, but I can't tell. And I go into a restaurant, I'm like, I think that person's videoing me right now. But I, and my friends are like, you're crazy. It's not happening. And then suddenly it became, every week that went by, it got worse and worse and worse. And so I've lost all of my anonymity. I mean, I can't go out to eat in New York. I can't go out to eat in LA. And I finally decided with this power, what do you do with it? And I have never liked social media. I've never liked what it represented. I can't stand thumbs up or thumbs up or down. I say, fuck you. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I can't, you know, that whole piece to me can be really cruel. Mm. And I thought, you know, now with my newfound fame, how do I highlight incredible young people here that are doing amazing things? How do I highlight amazing stuff that go on? The irony of everything is that I run a zero waste event business and I focus on social and environmental impact. And the irony is that I was gonna suck the dick of the customs officer to free 250,000 plastic water bottles. I don't have plastic at any of my events. What was I thinking? So you're talking about your new platform which uh, you are using to trying to influence uh, or maybe mentor young kids who are maybe a little bit lost in social media you are looked upon as like a father figure and because of one failed blowjob. Uh, isn't kind of strange that, uh, for, that you are now 
the mentor for the youngsters because of that? A little, yeah. yeah. But our political situation in the United States is less than good at this point, as you know, and I think that when I sit with the CEOs of some of the major brands around the world and I say, what is it that you think I have that these kids love? And each one will say, you're authentic, you're truthful, you tell it the way it is, and that you're dedicated to your causes. And I think that the Gen Zs, the Gen Xs, and the Millennials are looking at going, this is kind of cool. Here's somebody who, you know, some will say, I wish you were my daddy, but most of them say, I wish you were my dad, thank God. But okay. at the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing, and they see that. Mm. And somehow I'm an older person now that they relate to. And that's somehow gained a lot of power. Um, meeting with a big brand, a huge soft drink brand. I mean, I got offered to host a big halftime ceremony for one of the biggest sports programs in the world for next year. And I said, you know what? I will do it if okay. you make it zero waste. And they said, can you come in and talk to our marketing team? I'm like, how the fuck am I? Who am I? I'm going to tell these billion dollar corporations what to do. They're like, will you come in and talk to everybody? Just to say, okay, here's what you need to do. I know that many of these corporations are doing amazing things in technology today with sustainability, mm -hmm. but the messaging isn't getting out there. Nobody knows. And I said, these kids want to know, and they'll buy your product if they know that you're doing incredible things. But it's, a, uh, it's quite a process now. And you have your own TV shows in the work uh, uh, for, for uh, networks and for internet, right? So how many projects are you now juggling in the air? Um, we're starting to shoot a uh, show in the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, that's going to be, I can't say too much, but it'll be watching me build something um, that'll be happening in one year. Um, that will have something to do with music. Um, I'll be hosting events uh, in large homes around the world with celebrities. Mm. Uh, I'm launching a podcast called Mouthwash. Um, we're, I'm doing a, a series on YouTube. Um, there's a ton of things, but it, predominantly focusing on younger audiences right now and how do I help them drive positive change? How do I help them highlight their peers that are doing incredible things? You know? So what is your main message that you are trying to drill down to them? That don't be afraid of failure. Uh, just go and do it. All this. Take this one for the team. Take one for yeah. the team if needed. I can't expect everybody to drop to their knees. But um, I continually say to them, listen, don't take a job working in a cubicle in a big company that you hate. Mm. If you need to go out there and find a small company, maybe it's a startup, follow your heart, follow your passion, and take a risk. And sometimes you're going to have to do something that you never thought you'd have to do. I'm not saying that every person has to get out there and suck a dick, but I am saying that maybe <laughs> every once in a while, you're involved with a company that you love. You're involved with a product you represent. You might have to do something you never thought you'd have to do. Take one for a team. Yes. Right? Any mm -hmm. means necessary. Yep, in many different ways. But I'm hoping to inspire them to say, hey, follow your heart, follow your passion, do something you love. Don't take a fucking job you hate. Andy, uh, let's talk about influencers and, and the role in the, in the current media. Because here in Lithuania, and I think the same thing is, is all around the Western world, uh, the, the dream job for young people is to be an influencer of, of anything, right? Yeah? To be an uh, influencer on Instagram, on, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on. So. And we've seen how uh, naive are these influencers in Fire Festival. You know, they didn't question, they didn't didn't uh, ask, they didn't hesitate. They just you know did what they've been told. How do you see that uh, big movement, uh, the, as we call it, Kim Kardashian world uh, movement? Uh, developing in uh, uh, upcoming years? You can already see um, I spent the last few weeks doing speaking tours throughout Canada, and Canada is one of the first countries now to institute no likes. Like, you want to post something, you don't see any likes. So you have no idea what other people are saying. Um, I'm really hoping that the world of social media is losing its edge on 
criticizing and being negative and that hopefully people will see that it's a great platform to highlight people doing cool things. Mm. Um, I feel like the younger generation wants to make a difference. They want to take a job that, they're, that has importance. They want to represent something. Kids today, they are what they wear, they are what they eat, they are where they go. And I'm hoping that that whole mentality will start to help to shift the world of social media to a better place. Uh, Andy, finally, uh, you are also uh, preparing to host your own music festival in New York City, which is kind of bold of you being, you know, the part of the biggest failure in music festivals ever. 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 Mm -hmm. And now you're just going uh, bolder and further with another festival, which is everybody will be looking well. What is going to happen to this one? This one. Um, this music festival will be zero waste, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to take a year to plan it instead of six weeks. Um, we're going to raise a lot of money at the beginning, which is happening right now with some major brands, so that there'll be plenty of money to do what we need to do. And we're going to try to drive positive change and highlighting everything from local farmers to young chefs doing amazing things to designers doing cool things to clothes that are made sustainably to um, we're finding now with all this research that kids attending all these music festivals are kind of looking for something more than a hot dog and a beer and a hit of ecstasy hopefully it's something a little more deeper than that and so these are the things that we're focusing on right now we're picking communities around the world that have experienced tragedy, uh, tragedy that have experienced uh, some major difficulties, and we want to drive awareness to these areas and uh, try to help improve them. And uh, we've developed, we're developing a program where I'm going to be able to leave a legacy in every city where we host an event. Um, that's going to be something permanent that will leave structures and small businesses there that will run through perpetuity. So. Um, I'm hoping that it'll be very different from fire. Mm. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah. All the best. Eh? And it's, it's really interesting to hear when uh, your biggest failure can turn out to your biggest success, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, for being here okay. on the show. Yep. We have a small gift for you here as well. Uh, this is the name of our show. So hang in there, Andy. Oh, hang and in all there. the best luck. All right. Best wishes from Lithuania. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Andy King, ladies Thanks, and gentlemen. Guys. Thank you.